Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. You're listening to Bloomberg Business Week with Carol Masser and Tim Stenevec on Bloomberg Radio. The story I'm about to tell you is how I, Huey P. Newton, the Black Panther Party founder, was set free into a prison. All right, everybody, the Black Panther Party, a fake movie production and a nationwide manhunt. That is the story of Huey Newton, who is the subject of a new limited series debuting this Friday on Apple. Behind it all and back with us, Jim Hecht, creator of The Big Cigar. You might recall last time we talked with him was about his TV series, Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty. We are so delighted to have Jim back joining us from L.A. How are you? Hi, Carol. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. It's good to be here. It's great to have you here. First of all, Huey Newton, he was the subject, from what I understand, of your graduate thesis back in 1999. Mm -hmm. Tell us how and why that he was an individual that really caught your attention. I mean, I was into, like, participatory democracy, political theory, you know, um, civil disobedience, nonviolence, civil disobedience, and uh, social movements. And I heard about this guy, and I just thought, he was incredible. I couldn't believe what what he had done and the way that, you know, a college guy at that time got into a law book, went out in the streets and changed the agenda, changed the dialogue about everything. I just thought it was incredible. And then when I went, decided to go to film school because I thought that was sort of a, a better way to change the world than law or politics. I heard this story about how he escaped the FBI manhunt after he had been framed for a murder um, and got to Cuba. And I just thought that was the coolest story I'd ever heard in my life. And it has shades of Argo. So how do you yeah. write, direct, like were you inspired by what Ben Affleck and the, the team did with Argo? Like how did that fit into how you were crafting this? Right. So like she said, I wrote it as my thesis script at USC in grad school, 1999. And then I kind of put it away. I went and worked on the Ice Age movies. I was working with talking animals a lot. Um, But this is what I always wanted to do. And so when Josh Behrman, who is a friend of mine, uh, stole the story that ultimately became Argo to Smokehouse, to George Clooney's company, I was like, I have something similar. I think it's better, cooler, better characters. And he sort of took a look at what I had and agreed. And so that was 2009, maybe. And then uh, he started working on the article and we couldn't find Burt Schneider. Like he had produced all these movies, Easy Riders, Last Picture Show, Five Easy Pieces, he, The Monkees, and he had just sort of disappeared. His house had burned down. No one knew where to find him. So we were about to give up. And then I used to write at night a lot. So I went to Swingers one night at like three o'clock in the morning and they were kicking out this older unhoused gentleman with a walker and he dropped money on the floor. And when I bent down to help him pick it up, I saw the eyes and I was like, oh my God, you're Bert Schneider. And he was like, yes, tell them who I am. Tell them what I did with Chaplin. And we sat in a booth. He was living in a, a, a one room motel next to Swingers Diner on Beverly. And so I've just always am fascinated with the decision making behind this. What made you not want to make it a movie? Why, what, what led to landing on a short series versus a traditional film? Yeah, it's, that's a great question. And we had originally approached it as a feature. Um, but it was like, there was so much more character and story that we wanted to tell, particularly the story of the Panthers, Huey's backstory. And in a two hour format, it just started to get crowded out by all the caper stuff. Um, but in a longer format, six hours, eight hours, we saw that we could sort of, I don't know if you've seen Escape from Danamora, but sort of use the caper as a thin level of story at the top and then use, but but most of it is about these people and these characters and, and, and their relationships. So um, it just seemed like a limited series was a better format to do that. Well, talk about the relationship though between Bert Schneider and Huey Newton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bert saw Huey and was like, you know, this is a guy who had discovered Jack Nicholson in Easy Rider. And uh, and he was famous for sort of supporting talent and letting them do what they wanted to do. He never went to set famously. And he saw Huey, he was like, that guy's a star. 
And he aggressively tried to seek out Huey and try to get involved with the Panthers. He wanted to give them money. Uh, Huey was wary of him at first, um, but ultimately they did uh, start to work together. And Bert would, you know, write checks for Panther programs and sort of stay out of the way like he did with his um, with his movie productions and and and. And the friendship blossomed from there. They stayed, you know, friendship, friends, very close friends until Huey died. Mm -hmm. uh, Bert was in his wedding, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it, it was a, 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 a close personal friendship. Well, tell us about the tale of and what what. Just give us a little bit of a tease of what someone who watches mm -hmm. um, uh, the Big Cigar what they will see, and what this story is all about. But yeah, it's it, 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 to me the thing that's that that's cool about it. It is a portrait, a nuanced, I think, portrait of a of a revolutionary in crisis, which is something that you don't see mm -hmm. often. I don't like to do hagiography; like I don't think it's helpful for people to see perfect people do incredible things. I think it's helpful to see people that have human issues like we all do do incredible things because then you can do something too. Um, and he, we, he spent three years in solitary confinement, which we now know is a form of torture for uh, shooting a police officer who shot him. And he was the, the conviction was ultimately overturned, but he comes out of prison. He has all this probably PTSD. He's an instant, international celebrity which he wasn't when he went in and the fbi is pursuing him 24 7 basically trying to kill him but you know in, it's sort of a slow motion assassination attempt where they didn't just walk up to him and shoot him but they tried to drive him insane they pitted panthers against each other they wrote fake letters between leaders and from letter, you know, made phony phone calls from rival factions. We're going to get you. They bought the apartment next door. They would break in, you know, all the time and wake him up with a gun in his face. They staged a shootout in the hallway of his apartment building to try, try to draw him out to shoot him. So it was just this constant, you know, like someone's trying to kill you and it's the federal government with the full force and resources of the FBI and J. Edgar Hoover personally targeting you. And uh, they ultimately were able to charge him with this murder and he'd become friends with Bert and with nowhere else to go. And that's part of the success of COINTELPRO. It cut him off of all of his allies in the movement and locally in Oakland where he didn't know how to trust. He had a safe haven in Hollywood and he fled there. They bulldozed the car <laughs> and hit it and hit him out and uh, ultimately hatched this plot of getting him to Cuba under the guise of making a movie. Um, and they all had code names. You know, this guy's the producer, that guy's the director, Huey is the package or the star. And the story is about how the producer got the star to uh, Big Cigar, AKA Cuba, without landing in the pokey. All right. Again, and, this and was crazy stuff happens along the way. We'll, we'll go there. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> I don't want to spoil too much. Um, but uh, there's a shootout that was real um, in Cantor's Deli. Uh, they hired a pilot to, like somebody's drug dealer who was known for making runs to South America to build an airstrip and fly him to Huey. But the guy pocketed the money and tipped off the mob who already had a hit out on Huey. So they came down to Hollywood and took a shot. Uh, they hired a boat and I don't want to get into too much what happened with the boat, but yeah. it will blow your mind when you see it. Um, but that's all true. You know, it's just a series of like any production things went for, especially when you're dealing with seventies Hollywood, things are going crazy. Yeah. These guys are putting out fires and Huey at the same time dealing with he's at what I loved about the story is he's at a crossroads in his life where he really, has to reevaluate everything and get back on the beam because mm -hmm. he had made a pivot from, you know, you're used to seeing the Black Panthers. You look on Google, you're going to find a bunch of images of guys with guns. 
but which you don't see is that they were getting up at 5 a.m. every day and feeding Oakland sc- school children in a program that's still in operation and feeds millions of kids. You don't see that they built ho- uh, housing and education and hospitals and ambulance serving service. They built a factory for clothes and food. And so that's what he had pivoted to. And right. that is why the FBI declared war on him, not because of the guns, but because he was doing these programs and they saw these programs could work and people were going to want change. And so they declared war on him before he could, you know, usher in this revolution that he was talking about. Right. They saw it was real and that he could do it. They yeah. tried to break him. Still with us is Jim Hecht, creator of The Big Cigars we mentioned earlier, also behind the TV series Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty, and he's also done a lot of other stuff. Before we move on, Jim, I do want to ask you um, on The Big Cigar uh, and telling uh, Huey Newton's story. I mean, why do you think it hasn't been done before? Like, he's a really interesting oh, gosh. individual. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think there's like at least 450 years of history beyond that question. Um, Fair. I think it's it's heartbreaking, you know, that, that there hasn't been a Huey Newton movie that, you know, there's a lot more story to tell. And somebody should do the eight season Panthers, you know, Game of Thrones gigantic epic series about about you know everything that they did um i think it is you know it's hard to get stories around people of color made then you have other dirty words like politics Mm -hmm. and people don't want to do political and period and Mm -hmm. you know it's just those are things that i think are turnoffs how was it hard for people that how hard was it for, for you to get this done I've been working on this for 25 years. Like I said, this was my thesis project at USC. So yeah, I mean, it's been, uh, you know, I had, it all came out of a, a, like a personal bottom for me where I had this conversation with myself, which was like, you can no longer do stuff that you like anymore, just do stuff that you love. Mm. And um, you can't try to make shows that you think people want to watch anymore. You have to make the show that you would want to see. And that led to, you know, I think it was the day after that self-conversation that I found the book that became Winning Time. Mm -hmm. And then people were like, what else do you want to do? And I was like, this, this is the story I want to do more than anything else. As you've mentioned 25 years in the the making, you cast Andre Holland to play Huey. Mm -hmm. What went into the casting process? Again, given the length of time it's taken you to get this across the finish line and what stood out about Andre? Well, that's it. I mean, I thought that's the one person that should do this. Like I watched Andre and the Nick. That's I think that's the first time I really became, you know, aware of what he could do. Um, And I I think he's one of the greatest actors living today. I don't know anybody that I would say is better. Um, And I mean that. And not only was he I mean, he is breathtaking in this role. He is incredible. And not only was he incredible on camera, but working with him, he fought tooth and nail uh, to make sure we got it right, to make sure that the perspective stayed with Huey, um, to make sure that we didn't dip into any tropes. I mean, Andre was in the details and is just an incredible creative partner and an inspiring actor to work with. Mm -hmm. And, um, we were blessed. So when his agent called and said, what about Andre Hahn? I was like, mm-hmm. you don't have to like that. That's it. There's a list of one. That's the guy I want. And Jim, I'm a big fan of nonfiction. When you're working with stories based in reality and you're trying to hold mm-hmm. them up, you know, it's kind of like what we do with in journalism. How does that right. impact your ability to stick to a script and make sure that you're delivering what actually happened and not kind of fraying too far into reading between the lines or kind of implying what could or could have happened? In this one, we felt more of a responsibility to mm-hmm. stick as close to the truth as we absolutely could. Um, in certain cases, we had to combine uh, scenes just mm-hmm. because of budget, basically. Um, because we wanted to portray certain things. We didn't want to lose them. And we wanted to, you know, I think your guiding principle is stick to the capital T truth of the story that you're trying to tell and the characters that you're representing. Um, There were like a few things that, that, I mean, I'll give you one example. Like we had a a bombing, there's a bombing 
portrayed in uh, in one of the social programs. And I don't know that that went down that way, but it is reflective of the measures that people took at the time against the Panthers. Like a trap Brown's car was bombed. Fred Hampton was shot in bed, you know, like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it it is indicative of the kind of things that happened. And, and so um, we wanted to portray a, (laughs) that the, that they were opening this thing and B also get apart the measures that get across the measures that the FBI took against the Panthers and COINTELPRO and, and that this was indicative of the kind of things that they did. What did you learn in the process? This is obviously someone that you, like as you said, did your thesis, you knew a lot about, obviously um, you know, knew the subject, um, the history, but what did you learn in the process, Jim? Oh my God, that is a great question. I mean, well, first of all, when I first became attracted to the story, I was sort of, and this is an overshare for television, radio, I I was sort of in the midst of becoming an addict myself. And Mm -hmm. so I was attracted to certain elements of 70s Hollywood um, that I thought were heroic or or really cool. And I got, you know, I got sober in 2001. So in the 22 years that followed, my perspective on this story has shifted a lot because I do think these are incredible people, two incredible people who were derailed by addiction and mental health not being the topic that it was in the early 70s, particularly for men, you can just kind of, you know, see the way that 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 the insidiousness of uh, addiction and, 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 and mental illness sort of impact, you know, took away two great thinkers from our times. I also, I just think you don't know what you don't know. Like, yeah. you know, I, I came into this as someone who studied a lot of radical politics um, and just every day was a constant, you know, checking of yourself of what tropes are you bringing to this process? Like we're, you know, how are you thinking about things? And and I think when you're, when you consider yourself as sort of like, uh, for lack of a better word, liberal kind of a person, right? it's surprising at first to see how much is, you know, of your own thinking is out of line and needs, you know, a little bit of a step back. And, 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 and fortunately I worked with people that could explain things to me, you know, mm-hmm. in a way yeah. that it was just a constant learning. Every day was a learning experience. And that's, that's part of the, the great thing about this artistic process on this show is like, I didn't even know how much it was well, going to be like putting myself out there. Like you're good. People are going to see what you think when you, pick up a pen and start writing. Well, I think it's safe to say that the last few years and really coming off the pandemic mm-hmm. and just things that we continue to learn about our history as a nation and just people in general, like things that we just actually don't know a lot about. And so it's this series and, and other things that really kind of help fill in some of the gaps and, and have these conversations like you've been having uh it sounds like with yourself jim so fun to get some time with you good luck with it jim hecht creator of the big cigar uh catch it because it is making its debate debut on friday on apple tv plus jim take care jim joining us there in la